Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're talking to a man who is attacking the barbecue industry from every possible angle. Hey family, I hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. Today we're jumping all the way over to Texas and we're going to be chatting with Junior Urias from Up and Smoke Barbecue. Now if that name sounds familiar, I did actually catch up with him. I Actually, I met him for the first time in 2019 over at the MBBQA conference in Kansas City and we were able to have a chat for four or five minutes there and so he was part of that, that compilation episode from that conference. But we're going to be able to sit down today and have a really good long chat, deep dive into what he's doing. And I've got to tell you, he is doing a lot. He is all over the barbecue industry. He's got rubs and sauces, classes, catering, food trucks, food restaurants. Uh, a new market is coming soon. He's a TV personality from Barbecue Pitmasters. I mean, he's just everywhere and he works like mad and he's just doing some great things. But before we bring him in here, I've just got a couple of announcements that I do need to run by you first. First up, I want to thank Jagged Woodfine for coming on board as our podcast partner for this episode. If you're out there and you're looking for a new smoker oven or gravity fed or asado or you've got a custom kitchen fit out that you need for your new barbecue joint that you're building, uh, make sure you check them out. They do some incredible work. I've got one of their smoker ovens just outside this window here behind me and it is a barrel of fun to cook on. We do some amazing things with it and you will have seen my recent uh, video series on YouTube with it as well. It's a good bit of kit. Do check them out. Now, if you're just at the beginning of your barbecue journey, head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com because we've got a free ebook available for you. It's the Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. And in that, you're going to find everything you need to know to take you from zero to hero in the world of backyard barbecue. You are going to be king of the barbecue in your neighborhood, no doubt at all. And it's completely free. Head on over there, smokinghotconfessions.com. Check it out. And a big uh, greetings this afternoon to everybody who's joining us in the Smoking Hot Confessions barbecue community over on Facebook. That's our Facebook group. That's where we record these podcast episodes live. And it's also where we just hang out in a family-friendly environment and chat about barbecue. And, you know, let's face it, a family-friendly environment on the internet is a nice change these days. So uh, come along and join us. Everybody's welcome. We'd love to see you there. Now, if you're catching this episode later on on the socials, if you're on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, a subscribe, and hit that little notification bell. Over on Facebook, it's all about the likes, the comments, and the shares. Instagram, it's the cute little love hearts, the comments, and the follows, our IGTV channel there. And if you are listening on a podcasting app, please do give us a rating and review. Those five-star ratings and reviews really help to push us up the charts. I'm not sure how. It just triggers the algorithm. And we have been pushed as high as number three on the podcast charts for food in Australia and number six in America. So for a little barbecue show out of uh, Gold Coast, Australia to reach number six in the US podcast charts in the food category, that's pretty amazing. And that's all comes down to the work that you're doing, giving us the five star ratings and reviews. So thank you very much for that. Now, I reckon you probably uh, heard enough out, uh, out of me on this. Let's, uh, let's get Junior in here. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? Junior, long time no see, my friend. How are you, buddy? Man, I am stoked. I'm super good. I'm happy to be on your show and, you know, I'm super excited. Thank you, Ben. Mate, I, I just want to say thank you for coming on board. I know it's like 8 or 9 p.m. where you are now, and I know you're working really hard these days, so I really appreciate you, uh, you know, sacrificing some Zeds to come on board the show. It's, it's, it's a real privilege for us. Now, as I said in the intro, you've got your barbecue truck, you've got your restaurants, you've got all that sort of stuff, but I'm curious to know, what was the last thing that you barbecued purely because you wanted to eat it for dinner? You know, it's funny, I... Uh... It's not going to be meat, unfortunately. It's going to be some grilled romaine lettuce. I, uh, really? I really enjoy, yeah, I really enjoy grilling some lettuce. It's pretty cool. It's unique. Um, you know, it's, it's just something different, you know? Okay. And how do you go about doing that? Well, I, uh, I get some, uh, dressing. You can do use Italian dressing, some ranch dressing, any type of, uh, dressing of your choice. And I, I put it in, in through the leaves. I cut the romaine lettuce in half. I put it in there, and I add a little bit of seasoning, grill it on a hot grill. And, um, you know, you don't want to leave it on too long. 
um, just a quick grill, and man, it's ready to go. Right now, I'd, I'd imagine that uh, cutting a romaine lettuce in half, you'd have sort of it'd be like a cup side, and then the and then the the open side. Do you only sort of sit it on the grill on the on on the cup side, or do you tip it over and uh, and get the inside of it as well? I get the inside. Um, I, I try to get the uh, the dressing to get the char the grill and man it's super fun it's super tasty and it's real good man you need to try it mate i've i'm uh definitely going to give that a go uh grilled lettuce is something that i'll be wanting to try for a while but it's haven't quite been brave enough to but i'm, I'm I'll, I'll give that a go <laughs> for sure now do you use that as as part of a bigger meal or do you just sort of is, is that your steak replacement you sit there and you just munch on a lettuce Actually, you know, we, we do when we do steaks uh, for customers and even for us, uh, for my family, we'll do uh, grilled romaine lettuce. Uh, and I think it's a good added uh, benefit to the steak. It, uh, instead of doing your traditional uh, lettuce, you can do the grilled romaine lettuces. And then if you want to not do steak or, you know, you can always add shrimp, that's a good addition to it as well. Yeah, that'd be really nice. I'd imagine some some grilled lettuce and some nice uh, nice smoky grilled prawns. That'd be really good. Now, um, you've got like a whole bunch of different barbecues for your restaurant and your food truck and all that sort of stuff. What do you cook on when you're at home? Uh, you know, it's funny you say that. I, uh, you know, I got a lot of grills. I got different grills, smokers, um, pellet grills. Uh, one that I use a lot is a Rectech uh, grill, and it's a 380. Man, that thing, I love using it. I love to grill on it. It's, you know, it's real easy and convenient. Um, you know, I work long days and hours and something to come home to and, and uh, just crank it on real quick and fast. And uh, it's, uh, it's my go-to. Yeah, cool. Now, I, I, I don't think Rectech is one that we really have much over here in Australia. And the, the only ones I've seen are pellet grills. So is that a pellet grill that you're cooking on? It is. Ah, interesting. It's a nice yeah, it almost looks like a Weber in a sense, but um, you know, it's all stainless steel, and I think I can get it up to about six hundred degrees, even even a little bit more from time to time. Wow, that's awesome! I think you're the first uh, you're the first Texan pitmaster of it uh, that I've spoken to that, uh, that that openly admits to running a pellet grill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, but uh, 2012 in my co- competition days, I was one of the first guys running uh, pellet grills. Uh, man, it was hard because nobody, they, they thought I was cheating using them and stuff like that. And I honestly just used it for my chicken and ribs. Uh, and you know what? I was killing the market. I was killing the circuit by using a different smoker with a different profile, you know? and uh, you know, I think I used it to my advantage. No doubt about that at all. Yeah. So let's let's take a quick uh, quick step back before that. Um, how did you get into barbecue? But like before you got into the competition scene, were you was your family big on barbecue when you were growing up? You know, I really wasn't. You know, we used to do uh, old school type grills, like over the fire style grills, uh, growing up. Uh, barbecue and smoking was not a big deal for us. I, I started, you know, cooking for my family, friends and stuff in the backyard and stuff like that. And from there, it just escalated and, you know, everybody was like my food. They said, man, that's some good stuff. You know, you enter some contests and, you know, the contest started from there. And, uh, I think I was in high school when I started doing competition, um, circuits and stuff like that and man i just had fun you know at the beginning and then of course it started getting to where you want to do better at the cook-offs you start getting a little bit more uh, serious you know that's also when my rubs were created um because i wanted to out season the competition yeah i i think that's the the, uh, the actual tagline of your business isn't it it is for my seasonings absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, out out season the competition. Nice, I love that. And so, wow, you, you actually started all the way back in high school, and you got into competition. I'm I'm assuming that they were. Uh, is it ICBA in Texas? You know, at the time there, I was there's some local cookoffs, and that's that's where I started. There was uh, no organizations at the at the time. 
you know, and it wasn't really big. Uh, we didn't have that many in our area either. I was in at the time in West Texas, which even even still today, there's minimum cookoffs in that area. So um, it was hard for us. I had to travel a lot to get into some of the bigger contests and stuff like that. But IBCA, yes, it was one of the first uh, organizations that I started with. Wow, that that's really interesting. I've been reading a bit lately that um, that uh, competition barbecue for high schoolers is actually starting to become more popular than high school football, and you're getting bigger crowd turnouts coming to these high school cookoffs than are coming to high school football. Was that was that what it was like for you, or it, is that more of a recent thing? Oh no, no, no. We didn't we didn't do nothing like that at all. I mean, uh, you know, there's nothing available for us other than you know go out to a local cookoff and drink some beer and you know cook some meat and that was it man it was fun it was getting out there with your family your friends and and invite as many people as you could and just have a ball you know that's how it started for me it was never intended to become a business uh, you know it was just fun and getting out there and doing what i love doing and it's cooking you know yeah yeah so you got into those competitions and you were traveling around texas a lot um how did the barbecue pitmasters thing happen? Because of course you were in uh, season six, episode two. You were the winner of that one um, from from uh, from when I was watching that show. Um, wh- what was that experience like? Well, it's funny. I was uh, we were in San Antonio at the San Antonio Livestock Show and Rodeo Cookoff, and uh, you know I've auditioned for barbecue pitmasters several times, several years. And we're at this particular cookoff, and we're set up. I mean, this was a Friday evening. I already had my meats, big meats, smoking. Um, the and, and uh, I got a call that evening, and it was about seven or eight in the evening. And they said, "This is so and so, barbecue pitmasters." I was like, "Who?" I I thought they were joking around at first. I was like, "Yeah, right. This is a prank." So I hung up. They oh. called me back. <laughs> They called me back, and I was like, holy crap, maybe this is for reals. Who is this? And then I can't remember who it was, but I was super stoked when they called. And uh, they asked me, I said, can you be in Florida by Sunday? And I was like, well, I'm at a cook-off in San Antonio, and this was a Friday evening. And we're, I mean, I'm telling you, I had my pits rolling smoke were set up. At the time, I had a, a toy hauler. So my pits, and I was smoking on some uh, uh, stumps, smokers at the time. And uh, I had them set up, hanging outside the, the trailer and stuff like that. And we were just having a blast and cooking and all that. And I had to make a decision right then and there if I was going to go to Florida to be on Barbecue Pitmasters. And, of course, man, it was definitely, I was like, yes, we're going to do that, most definitely. So I ended up picking one of my friends out of the audience. I said, hey, dude, you want to go with me to uh, Barbecue Pet Masters in Florida? He said, hell yeah. So anyways, that's how it became. So we packed my bags, and all I took was a few knives, some a lot of my seasonings, and a few, uh, like, underwear, and and that was it. We got on the jet plane, went to Florida, kicked ass, and, uh, you know, that was the beginning of the entire uh deal for us yeah that's amazing see you had 48 hours notice did you have to abandon the the livestock and rodeo show or did you leave like one of your teammates in charge and you just took off for the airport and they cooked the competition what happened with uh with that end of it well i I did i had one of my friends uh take over and he managed uh to be able to finish the cook-off uh we didn't do so well um at the cook-off but uh, they also, you know, were able to get my trailer, uh, clean up, you know, load everything up and take it to one of my friend's house in San Antonio. And San Antonio for us is about six and a half hours to where I lived at the time. So, oh, wow. you know, good haul, but man, it was all worth it, Ben. Most of Yeah. Me. Yeah. No doubt about that at all. So tell us, what was the experience like actually on set of Barbecue Pitmasters? You know, it was real cool. It, it was the first time for me to be on national TV like that. And, uh, you know, you can tell on the first few episodes uh, that I was a little nervous and stuff like that. 
Uh, but man, I got in there, I got focused. And uh, the thing that made me do real good was, you know, I just went in there and, and you know, it's being in my office. That's what I do on a day in, day out basis. And man, it all was natural to me other than the cameras. Everything was natural to me. Um, the, the Another thing was kind of odd was they were always wanting to get you to say certain things and, and you know, kind of change your character a little bit. But, you know, I, I kind of try to keep it all the same. And then uh, you can see as we went on with other Barbecue Pit Master shows that my true character came out. And, you know, I just kind of ignored what they wanted me to do in a, in a sense. So just to make a better show, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah, your 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 true self definitely shone through, and I think that's what uh, what attracted a lot of the of the viewing public to you. And I had I had, I have heard quite a lot about uh, the influence of producers on reality TV. So uh, <laughs> how they like yes. to try and uh, sort of push people into certain character roles in the show. Yeah, they 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 try to do that, and uh, you know some of it we try to accommodate, but you know. Uh, it, it just got to a point where you're busy cooking and grilling and stuff like that, and you don't have time to really listen to them as much. Well, at least I didn't. Uh, man, I was out there trying to, man, I want to kick some butt, you know? So anyways, that's, I kind of ignored them a little bit and just did my thing. And, you know, same time, I just want to win, you know? But I didn't, I didn't care much about the TV at the time. Uh, you know, until even after two weeks later, Ben, it was like, man, I was really on that TV show, you know? So even even still to this day, it's kind of, man, it's humbling and it's cool. And I was fortunate and I'm glad I was able to be on there. Yeah, yeah. And so from there, from there, then you were, you were well, you already had your rubs, your, your seasonings running. And then, so from the success of that, were you then able to sort of leverage that success to grow the rubs and sauces and then get into your food truck and your restaurant and all that sort of stuff? You know, that, that, uh, the seasonings have always been like a second or third business to us. And honestly, okay. if I would, if I would have changed a lot of things, then I would have made it my first and priority business at the time. Uh, we just kind of, honestly, we just kind of put it on the back burner. We, uh, we focused more on our catering business and we were killing it, uh, with our catering business. You know, we started doing one or two caterings, maybe a week sometimes not even that to having like, you know, like I've told you in, in the past interviews, like two to three a day, uh, caterings and, uh, man, you know, it's amazing when you do that, but it slowly becomes that, uh, you know, and it doesn't happen overnight, definitely, but, uh, you just got to hang in there and continue to do what you really love and, and see it for what it is and continue it, you know? Yeah, when you're getting into things like two and three caterings a day, like how do you, how do you sort of juggle all that? How do you keep it all? How do you keep your energy up to be able to do that? <laughs> well, you're kind of uh, at the beginning. You, you're in love with the business, and you love what you're doing, and you're trying to build the business, and you're trying to get new customers, and you know it's slowly. You're kind of almost blind in a sense when you first start doing all this because. Man, I look back now and I'm thinking, wow, I don't know if I'll do that again. It's crazy. I mean, the insane hours that you put, the the pressure, the the stresses that you put on your family to be able to do what you love. Mm -hmm. It's just ridiculous, man. I, uh, you know, I put my family in a lot of danger a lot of the times because of the stuff that we did. And, you know, I gambled a lot with, with making this my priority and my business and stuff like that. And. Thank goodness we did because, I mean, we wouldn't be where we're at now if it wasn't for, for you know, definitely my family and, and my dad that helped me and, you know, everybody that was there for me from the get-go. Like my wife, Jennifer, she she uh, helped me a lot with this business and kept me, you know, you start feeling bad, you start feeling good. I mean, you got your ups and downs uh, with the entire business. But, man, you know what? It it uh, it is true love and it happens and you just make it happen, you know. Yeah. Now, given that you started uh, competing when you were in high school, did you have like a 
another career that you sort of had to balance with all this catering work and that? Or were you, did you sort of go from high school straight into the like food service industry? No, I didn't. Uh, you know, I had multiple jobs, different uh, style jobs, uh, you know, from electrician to other, you know, when you're young like that, you know, you're in your 20s and stuff like that. You don't have the best jobs, of course. Well, at least I didn't. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, each job I progressed and started becoming a little bit better and getting better jobs. And then, you know, I, the barbecue scene didn't come to I was, you know, maybe in my 20s, 25s, somewhere around there where I really thought, man, you know what? I could potentially do this as a business. So. That's how it started. If you're looking for your next barbecue smoker or grill, Jagged Wood Fired has got what you need. Owners Julianne and Glenn are multiple award-winning barbecue competitors who have even travelled to the US to compete at the World Barbecue Championships in Houston, Texas. Based out of Perth and shipping nationwide, Jagged is one of the largest pit builders in the country and has an ever-growing lineup of meat cooking machinery. Not only do they have their now famous smoker ovens, their incredibly efficient gravity fed cabinets are proving extremely popular in commercial settings, and they also make some of the most stylish asado grills you're ever going to see. Jagged is also well known for amazingly detailed custom work ranging from backyard designs all the way to installations in commercial kitchens. Proudly Australian designed, owned and manufactured, you can find out more at jaggedwoodfired.com.au spelled J-A-G-R-D. Once again, head to jaggedwoodfired.com.au spelled J-A-G-R-D to learn more. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. So things in your, like around your mid-twenties sort of started to move into the, the, the business side of barbecue and you actually, uh, you started with a food truck and, uh, sorry, catering and food truck. I understand you actually built your own restaurant, like you personally, physically, with your own hands, you built the restaurant. Tell us about that experience. Well, that, that was, uh, I won't never do that again. I, you know, I bought it managed. <laughs> A project managed the entire operation, and man, let me tell you, there the stress levels with a busy business at the time. You know, you're juggling various caterings, and uh, you, you're, it's man. I won't go back to that. I tell you that much. So, uh, this new restaurant we're building now here in Early, uh, Texas, we are. I already got an entire crew doing that. Uh, I'm not, but I'm not doing any of it. Thank goodness, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand that there were um, some, some hiccups that you've had with that first restaurant in, in Midland. Did it cost you $20,000 to get a water tap installed? Is that what I read? Uh, actually, the water, the, the water tap cost us like $36,000. Uh, wow. You know, that, that's just what it costs. There's only six people in the entire uh, city that could or you know, registered to be able to do this water tap. And, you know, I think they kind of, honestly, they take a little advantage of you. And, yeah. uh, and also I think, I think the lack of my experience, uh, the entire build cost me a uh, little over budget. You know, I want to say a good hundred thousand over budget. Um, you know, the time for me to do the entire project cost me a lot. So, um, I would not recommend get a contractor to do the entire project from the get go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. And now you did just briefly mention before that you've now moved to to early. What what prompted the move from Midland to early? Well, there's a lot of things that happened, you know, in the past couple of years. You know, of course, everybody knows everything that's going on, but uh, we decided to come uh, here to this area because we bought some lake property. Uh, we we started coming almost on a weekly base just to get away from the society and everything going on, you know. And I told Jennifer, my wife, I said, man, I love this area. We ought to move down here. And uh, I thought she would say absolutely not. But 
She said, absolutely. So, you know, we decided to sell the restaurant. We sold our house that her dad built. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that happened that, uh, you know, it just slowly worked out for us. And within six months, we were already moved. So it was it was an awesome move. And, uh, you know, I think it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I did look up early on the map. It's quite a small town. And you've you've started off with a with a food truck. How, what has the, the response been to the, to the food truck in such a small town? Is like, 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 is the food truck thing a big scene? You know, actually it's, it's really not. Uh, the reason I moved to this area is, you know, of course, if you looked at it on the map, it's centrally located in Texas. So when I was in Midland, you know, we were in West Texas and the barbecue scene just, it just doesn't travel that far. We did bring a lot of people in from, you know, your Fort Worth, Dallas, Austin area. Um, People traveled to go visit us in Midland, but I really was really interested in this area because of the lake, uh, the surrounding communities, the being so close to Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, all the metroplexes. I mean, basically, those are our customers in a sense. So once we get the restaurant finished and built, uh, we will have them customers from the surrounding communities, the areas, uh, we'll have people, you know, in the, in the vicinity. So I think it's a good idea for us to be in this location. Um, it's just a beautiful little town. It's real humble. The people are nice. They're friendly. They, uh, really took a liking to us being here, bringing awesome barbecues. So I think it's a super promising, uh, area for us yeah sounds good we've got a couple of people over here in australia that are setting up barbecue joints in in sort of smaller country towns and in some regards it almost seems easier to them because people are so more open and accepting and and welcoming than than say a lot of city folk are um it's it's kind of interesting because it 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 almost feels counterintuitive yes i agree i agree i think you know, I think people are trying to get out of the city and, and venture off to these little towns. And that's the big thing now. You know, I think that's going to be the biggest deal for us. And, you know, at the trailer now, we get people from the San Antonio, Austin, uh, all over. You know, it's not affecting them, us. And, and uh, you know, at the beginning, it was hard for us, you know, get everything going and let people know we were in this area and stuff like that. But, you know, Word of mouth, good barbecue, good food. Uh, people start talking, and you know it. it and then barbecue pitmasters helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, I I don't doubt that for a second. Now you've never been one to sort of uh to sort of sit on your hands and and wait for things to happen around you. You've the the restaurant is is still being built. What what setup are you running at the moment? Right now, I have uh I got two trailers. I got set up right close to our new location. So I I did that, that way people get used to coming to our location in a sense. I couldn't set up at our uh, construction site, so I had to set off a little ways from there. But anyways, I did that so people get used to coming to our location. And uh, you know, I got that trailer and then I got a smoker trailer that I kind of butt up to each other and that's where I cook all my, um, the majority of my foods. Yeah, right. And so please tell me that you're doing things like uh, starting further out from the restaurant and then each week you bring them a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer just to train train the public to sort of lure them into your, uh, into your restaurant site. Absolutely, absolutely. We, <laughs> we push it. We push it a lot. We, we tell each guest as they come that don't worry, we're fixing to be in our location and we're going to have indoor dining and, uh, you know, our food's going to be just if, as fresh, if not fresher and better, you know, the, the entire scene's going to be better for them. So uh, they're excited. that they, They've they been needing some good barbecue for this area and, you know, um, I think it's going to work out good for us, Ben. I think so too, mate, for sure. What, um, what smokers are you running in that trailer at the moment? Uh, on that trailer, I got a custom Myron Mixon seventy uh, two XC. It's a. It used to be a water a H two O water, 
unit, but I kind of customized it. And, uh, you know, I, it worked super good. As a matter of fact, I reached out to David and Myron. We're supposed to uh, maybe, hopefully, come up with, uh, you know, a new pit uh, for their line. I don't know if uh, we'll make it happen, but that's what I'm going to uh, refer and suggest that they do uh, for this particular model. And I think it'll be a killer setup, man. It's uh, super awesome. You might see it in, in some of my videos that I post, uh, but man, it's a killer setup. It works good. It's fuel efficient, minimal fuel, minimum wood. Um, man, it's just, I think it's going to be a awesome, awesome setup for anybody in the catering business, the restaurant world, even for competition, man, this thing can do it all. Yeah. I've never cooked on one myself, but I've heard nothing but great things about them. So did you pull the water pan out of it completely or, and you're just running it like as a, as a standard sort of dry smoker type setup, or did you replace the water system with some other kind of system? Actually, I didn't replace the water system. What I did was added more plate and more steel. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't use water whatsoever. And then I converted it to a reverse flow smoker. And, oh, man, this thing, I'm telling you, I use it mainly for my ribs. And, man, the ribs coming off of this is unreal. The moisture is there. The, the retention of the meat is there. Uh, it's, it's probably one of the best smokers that I got uh, since uh, the modification. And man, I'm excited to uh, show David and, and Myron uh, some of the setups on that. And man, hopefully we can uh, call one of the grills or one of the smokers that we create like that. Uh, maybe I can get my name on it or something, you know? I was just about to ask, is it going to come out as the, you know, Myron Mixon H2O Junior Urias edition or something like that? Like, and, and then your, your signature embossed in like a badge and stuck on the front? Dude, that would be awesome, man. Wouldn't that it? would be cool. <laughs> yeah, it would. Uh, I, I call, you know, it's funny. I call the one that I use now on the trailer, I call it the Mexican mix and smoker. Uh, just because of the modifications that I did, you know, it's it's kind of like a Frankenstein. But, man, at the end of the day, this thing cooks and gets the job done with minimum fuel. And, uh, you know, fuel is expensive. Wood is costing a lot. So, uh, you know, it, it works. The thing works real good, and I, I'll put it up against any smoker out there. Yeah, yeah. I've I've, I've seen uh, photographs of the uh, barbecue that you're pulling off it, and it just looks amazing. It looks absolutely just delicious stuff. Now, the bricks and mortar barbecue joint, it's on the way. What's the process been like? Has it been smoother than the Midland restaurant to build? It really has, you know, I've got a good contractor, uh, a gentleman by the name of Gene. He is an awesome guy. He's doing a phenomenal job. He's built a lot of businesses in the, in the past years. He's easy to work with. He knows what needs to go in and how to do it. So man, you know, and also the, my restaurants are real simple, simple setups. I like, uh, you know, for the food and everything be hot and fresh when we do it. And as we're cutting it, I like a good assembly line, you know, a real fast, easy setup. So it's not real complicated. Uh, you know, the majority of the cooking gets done outside on my smokers. So it's real simple, you know, it's not too complicated. So, uh, you know, and then you can run volumes of food through it. So that's, that's how I like doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And so is your, is your plan going to be to serve it similar to other Texas restaurants where it's just, it, it's served in paper or are you going to uh, be going the other way, which is kind of a little bit sort of higher, like fine dining style barbecue with a, you know, the, the proper fine dining setup? No, it's going to be real simple. You know, I got some unique trays and uh, stuff that I used at my old restaurant in Midland. So I don't know if you get a chance, you might look at some of the old tray systems that we had. But it's super unique to us. Uh, nobody else is doing it. Uh, the food looks good. The trays are disposable. Um, you know, I think it's just a nice, nice setup. And, uh, you know, I think it's super unique for us. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have seen them and they did look really, really good. Now, the other thing that you're also working on is a market. Tell us about the market. Yeah, the, the market. You know, so 
this area that we're at, it, it really needs some good foods. Like uh, when I say foods, I'm talking about like steaks, uh, good quality steaks, you know, your premium choice, your premium primes, even some Wagyu. There's none to be found around here that's on a consistent base. It's hard to get. So that what brought me to do the uh, market. I thought, man, you know what? We can uh, do that and, and, you know, sell our rubs and seasonings and, you know, sell maybe a few grills and uh, pellets and stuff like that, that uh, this area needs. So, and then, you know, I got several sponsors and, you know, we're going to use all their supplies and, and send them at the market. And uh, I called it the market. It used to be the meat market, but I think the market works out a little bit better because we're going to be selling a little bit of everything. Uh, grilling supplies, you know, uh, just a little bit of everything. Yeah, meat market has a bit of a different uh, connotation over here in Australia. It's it, it was a nickname for uh, for discos that were only on for people to hook up at. So uh, the the <laughs> the market sounds like a much better name. And so, are you um? It, is that going to be on site with the restaurant so people can come and eat the food and then buy products to take home and and have a crack themselves? Is that how that's going to work, or are they separate separate sites, separate uh, business ideas? They are separate entities, but under the same business name. You know, it's still, it's going to be the, the market uh, up in smoke. So um, they're both going to be connected. Uh, I, I think uh, having them next to each other is a good deal for us. That way we can direct people either way. Uh, go eat some barbecue over there or, you know what, go get your grid and supplies next door. Yeah, very handy. Good idea. There's a guy doing something similar to that uh down here around Newcastle, and uh, I, I got to visit his uh, his joint uh, six months ago, and uh, yeah, it, it works seamlessly. So I I I definitely think you're onto something there. Now, um, the other thing that you do that I saw on your website that I thought was really interesting, you've got all this experience with rubs and sauces and food trucks and restaurants and construction of restaurants, and now you're into consulting. Tell us about the the consulting service that you offer. Well, you know, it's funny, uh, Harry Sue, y'all know Harry Sue. He was a barbecue oh, yeah. pit master. You know, he comes and visits me once a year, and we, we get to BS and talk and visit, uh, you know, and uh, me and him were joking one day, and we said uh, we need to build our own uh, consultations. Uh, and, and, you know, that's kind of basically where it started. I was like, man, that's a good idea. We should do it because uh, there's a lot of knowledge between you know him and I that we have uh, in the restaurant world, and and not only the restaurant world, but you know how to uh, cook a thousand pounds of meat for this catering and stuff like that. I mean, uh, how much meat are you going to have to use? How much uh, rub do you need? How much uh, supplies do you need? I mean, there's a lot of questions and answers. You know, some of them questions and answers I had when I was building my own catering business you know and i slowly from from uh you know screwing up a lot i kind of had to learn on my own hey that's not working or you know what i need to up my price on that i'm i'm not making enough money and you know over the 25 years that i've been doing it i've learned a lot and man i think uh you know i think i'm super knowledgeable when it comes to all this stuff uh you know i can direct people and save them a lot of time and money, uh, you know. So I think that's going to be my next deal is a lot of consultation. And uh, I think that's what I'm going to start offering it a little bit more because there's a lot of people that want to do it. And honestly, if I had somebody that would have taught me everything that I know now, I, I probably would have, you know, taken, uh, taken them up on that. So anyways, I, I think it's going to be a good deal for us and my services are are – as of right now, they're available to people. Matter of fact, I had some uh, guys from Chile, the the from South America, come recently, and we did an entire restaurant style, uh, you know, kind of class, I guess you want to say a class, but we did an in-depth, you know, class from the meats to the portions to the sides, and uh, as a matter of fact, they kind of wanna do the up and smoke style 
and chili now. Right. Interesting. So you're going to sort of be a global franchise. <laughs> well, you know what? It's it's funny, but chili are in chili people are just barely getting into the smoking stuff. Uh, you know, they're they're running behind with all this. Uh, they do a lot of grilling and stuff like that, but smoking is kind of unheard of. Uh, there's people that do it. There's some restaurants that have it, but they've all learned from YouTube. There's nobody that uh, has physically hands-on done it. So these guys, uh, man, they're fixing to make some big things happen in Chile for the barbecue world. Uh, they're going to change the entire scene for barbecue and smoking in that area. And I'm proud to be part of it. No doubt, man. That's a great privilege for them to have, uh, to have found you on YouTube and say, right, we're going to go, uh, we're going to go seek out junior over in early Texas. That's a, that's a huge, uh, huge acknowledgement of your, uh, your skills and knowledge and your contribution to the barbecue scene. Now, before we do move on, I do have one thing that I do have to, to, uh, to run past you. I have heard sure. a rumor that you might be pushing for a reunion special for Pitmasters. Is that on the cards? It is. You know what? I, I, I get asked a lot, Ben. I get asked a lot about, hey, are y'all going to make some more barbecue shows? Are you going to be on Barbecue Pitmasters again? Uh, and, man, that, that, I get asked that a lot. And I think people want to see more of that. So, you know, I think I have not told anybody. You know, I want to talk to Myron and a few other folks about potentially doing this but i think we need to have like a reunion barbecue pit masters reunion bring all the guys that were initially on the show and and man you know go at it have fun and you know uh walk around with a wheelchairs or or you know if we need some walking sticks or whatever <laughs> but uh anyways i think i think that would be fun man i think it'll be a good show and and man somebody out there needs to make it happen Mate, I met uh, the one and only Johnny Trigg there a few years ago, and I reckon if you tried to, if you tried to hand him a walking stick, he'd probably beat you with it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I I reckon that would be a great idea, ripper of an idea, yeah. super fun. Yeah, I think so too, man. Um, you know, hopefully hopefully we can make it happen. Um, I don't know, but I think you know barbecue pit masters kind of set the goals for all these barbecue shows and stuff like that, and. And quite frankly, honestly, we we got some of the best guys in the business that came out and did the show. And man, I'm I'm happy to be able to be one of the guys that were, uh, you know, on Barbecue Pitmasters. I think that's a huge deal. And man, I'm I'm super stoked that I was able to be on there. You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd, Ben Arnott. Alrighty, Junior, so we're into the third part of our show now, and this is the part of the show where our guests get to share some knowledge and impart some wisdom for the viewers and the listeners. So I'm going to sit back, take a couple of notes, interject with some questions here and there, and uh, I'm, I'm going to throw it over to you, and you can uh, give us a little lesson on something. Well, let me see. I, I think, uh, you know, like I said, I think, you know, doing the barbecue consultations is going to be a big deal for us. Um, uh, that's going to be a new endeavor. You know, there's not a lot of people doing it out there. I think that's a new market that hasn't been touched. I want to say it hasn't been touched. I'm sure there's restaurant people doing it, but you know, as far as barbecue people, um, I think it's a next big thing. So, and then I've got some other ideas for other stuff. Um, you know, I I don't want to mention it because I mean, it, I think it's a unique deal to me, and and you know later on maybe if it happens it'll, I'll let everybody know, but at the moment I'll just leave it at that. So uh, what else, man? What else you want to talk about? What else you want to ask me? What do you think? Well, with everything that's sort of going on in the world at the moment, um, a lot of people are really under pressure with jobs and not having jobs and whatnot. A lot of people are looking to sort of maybe start opening their own businesses and start, you know, making something happen for themselves. Where would be a good place, do you think, for people to start? Like, is the, do you think that the rub scene is oversaturated? Is this, like, is there, is there a need for more sources? Um, is a food truck the way to go? Should, should people be doing what you did and selling your house and investing that into a restaurant? 
what would be your advice to people that are sitting watching this or listening to this and are looking for for guidance into to get into the barbecue industry? Actually, I think it's a good time to get into the barbecue industry. You know, they are there is a lot of barbecue uh, businesses coming up. You know, but uh, if you want to make it happen, you can. You know, it's hard industry to get into. Uh, if I was to do it all over, Ben, I would probably give me a nice, uh, you know, a nice food truck or a nice trailer, maybe a couple of them, maybe even three or four. Uh, set them up real nice uh, to where you can really sell food. Uh, I would do something like that and, and not get into the, the overhead uh, prices and stuff of the restaurant world. Uh, maybe you can still rent, you know, a culinary kitchen. Uh, a commissary somewhere and, and do off-site caterings and stuff like that. I think that's a good way of making some good money. Uh, the rubs and, and sauces and seasonings and stuff like that, that's a hard market, man. It really is. If you got a good product, I think you need to bring it out and, and uh, you know, uh, sell it. If you want to sell it, make it happen. You can make anything happen. You just got to make it, uh, you just got to do it, you know. Uh, for me, I think the seasoning is a good good market. I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, it has never been my main priority. So if you do do a sauce and rub business, I would make it a priority if that's something you really want to do and, and focus on it. Run it 100%. Don't don't uh, get involved with uh, you know restaurants and and caterings and and rubs and stuff like that. I made it happen. I don't know how, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I would focus on, on selling your rubs, your seasonings, marking in it. Um, you know, there's a lot of people making a nice, successful living by doing that. And you know what? You're not obligated to stay at a restaurant seven days a week running a business. Um, you can be in Florida. You can be in Hawaii. You can be in anywhere in the world and rub your uh, rub. <laughs> run your uh rub and seasoning business from anywhere so uh man if you're really looking into getting into that jump in do it make it happen stay focused uh if y'all any of y'all have any questions comments call me message me um on ben's uh smoking hot confessions i did put some of my links to my pages so please go and like those uh you can always ask me questions and stuff like that I don't mind helping anybody out. Of course, that becomes a little bit more personal. I will have to charge you, but uh, anyways, <laughs> man, here to help. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what do you think would be some of your your best tips for selling rubs for for getting out there and and marketing the rubs like you were talking about? You know, I think uh, you know cookoffs are great. I think that's a good place you can start. But uh, the market, the people. Uh, is not they're not interested the cookout people they're not interested in buying your rubs you might sell a few to them they all want you to use their seasonings and stuff like that everybody in the cookout world's got their own seasonings and rubs and sauces and their own secret spice you know so your market's not going to be the cookout guys uh it's going to be the general public that's where you need a target and that's where you need a hit you know uh that's another reason the market uh, at my location, that's another reason we're going to sell our rubs and seasonings to the general public. Those are the people, those are your customers. Uh, you know, it's sad to say, but it is, it's the truth. Uh, those are the people that are going to be buying your seasonings. Those are the people that are going to be buying your sauces. So um, I would target the general public, the backyard people, the guys cooking uh, on a weekly base, or even you know, there's a lot of people now these days grilling and cooking every night. So those are going to be your uh, customers. Social media is a good way. You know, TikTok, um, Instagram. Uh, TikTok's pretty good for stuff like that. So, I mean, that's a good start. Yeah, probably a good way to, uh, to, to reach out to the next generation of, of barbecuers coming through as well. So get onto those younger profiles like, like TikTok there. I can see how that would work really well. So of all the different things that you've done in the barbecue industry, all the different angles that, that you've got working at the moment, what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned? The biggest lessons were, were you know, like, like the seasonings, you know. 
it was one of my first business. Uh, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't have up and smoke barbecue if it wasn't for my junior's rubs. Uh, it it kind of created my rubs, created my sauce, you know, because I used my rubs inside my sauce. Uh, you know, it's it's basically kind of put my entire business together. So, uh, like I said, if you're going to do a seasoning or something like that, run with it, man. I think it's uh, that's that was one of my uh downfalls if not taking uh advantage of it uh, i didn't know what i had in front of me honestly uh so you know i was kind of blind to it but that's one of my mistakes another mistake was uh you know you know trying to do so many things you know the business the rubs the caterings the uh man i put my family through hell you know with money and stuff like that trying to buy a thousand pound orders of rubs and seasonings um you know it, it just it all goes hand in hand but at the same time man you know it can kill you it really can so i was fortunate to be able to hang in there and and make things happen but uh you know if i had to do it all over ben i think i would have stayed focused on my seasonings and and maybe you know set up a little nice uh food trucks you know and stay simple and small and and not small but you know, the capacity, you can only handle so much until you start getting into commercial stuff. And that's what happened to me. Uh, you know, I was getting to, I was doing a lot of volume and I needed the restaurant. So uh, I wouldn't change that at all. But uh, that's what happens. You slowly start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And next thing you know, you got an animal on you, you know, and uh, it happens. Yeah, yeah. Wise words there, mate. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so I'm going to throw it over to you now. This is a good point for us to start to sort of wrap this up. So uh, give some thanks, give some praise, give some shout-outs to people that have helped you out along the way and make sure they uh, that you tell everybody where they can track you down on the internet and social media. Uh, social media, guys. Go to uh, Smoking Hot Confessions and I've linked uh, three or four of my pages. Please go over there and like them. Um, you can message me on any of those. I will be gladly to help you however I can. If you need some, uh, you know, some direction, I can help you with all that. If you need some consultations for a potential restaurant, even a food truck, uh, you know, I can help you with some stuff. And then, uh, you know, we can go there. Uh, shout outs, man. Sponsors. I got sponsors, you know, throughout these years. I've, I've kept my sponsors and, you know, some I kept, some have gone. But uh, B&B Charcoal is one of them. You know, we've been using them for quite some time. It's a good product. It's, it makes, uh, B&B stands for better burning. And, you know, it really does. It's good, clean product. So that's one of my sponsors I want to shout out to. Rec Tech Grills. I love their grills, man. They got good pellet grills. Uh, there's one in particular called the 380. It's a small one. And, man, I love that grill. That's my go-to grill, you know. Uh, for a lot of stuff. So, anyways, that's another one. Grill grates. You know, when I first started doing uh, SCA, the steak cook-offs, I, I was, you know, uh, grill grates with the Brad and all them guys. I was one of the first uh, SCA guys uh, to do uh, SCAs, and then I also use grill grates. So, man, I, I was, I'm still happy to be able to be a uh, sponsored team for grill grates and. Man, good products, good stuff. So, uh, also my rubs. I got my seasonings, you know. It's, my seasonings have always been part of my sponsorships, you know. It's it's weird to say, but they truly are, man. They, they, they've they helped me over the years, and they built my business, and, uh, you know, I couldn't do them without my rubs. Some of the best rubs out there are super unique. They're good. They put money in your pocket at the weekends. So, uh, man, reach out if you need it. Uh, just call me or reach me at one of the links and we can ship it to you and get you set up. And Compart Family Farms, the best pork out there, we use them a lot for uh, a lot of our, you know, competitions and then also for the barbecue classes. So anyways, oh, that's another thing, Ben. I do host a lot of barbecue and grilling classes. Yes, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, so yeah, I forgot to mention it too. So uh, we do those a lot. So call me, message me, email me, whatever. We can get them fixed up too. And uh, I do want to go to Australia and host a lot of classes down there. I think that would be fun. 
and uh, I'm not that uh, I'm the best or anything like that. I know I'm not. There's a lot of good cooks out there, but man, I got my own unique styles, and you know, uh, I might be able to help out a lot of folks. You know, get some GCs and and stuff like that. So, anyways, thank you for having me, Ben. Thank you, Smoking Hot Confessions. Uh, I'm glad to be a part of your team that uh, you want me to be on your show. I'm I'm super stoked and proud and I'm happy to be your friend. I appreciate you very much and everything you do. Uh you're kidding it, dude, in the barbecue world, man. Your 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 uh podcasts are awesome, dude. And keep up the good work, bro. Thank you very much, man. That uh that that means a lot coming from uh from such a high profile person as yourself. I I I really do appreciate that. Well, look, thanks very much for your time. Um, I, I realize you've got another big day ahead of you again tomorrow, building that restaurant and running that food trailer and all the rest of the things you got going on. So I'm going to say thanks very much for your time. And I really look forward to hopefully seeing you again at, uh, at NBBQA 2022. You got it, bud. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. And there you have it, family. That was the one and only Junior Urias, quite possibly the busiest guy in barbecue. He literally never stops. He's got so many different uh, irons in the fire, so many different angles on his business model there. And it's really fascinating to to get that story of how he sort of merges them all and, and gets them all together. So that was a really great opportunity for us. And if you do have the opportunity, get over there, check out his classes, as we discussed there at the end. Um, if you're looking to set up a business, he can coach you through that as well. So hit him up for that. Great guy. And uh, he's always happy to lend a hand to anybody at all. Now, before I do let you go for today, just a quick reminder of the announcements at the top of the show. Big thanks to our podcast partner, Jagged Woodfire, for coming on board the show. Beautiful people, beautiful smokers. I've got one in the backyard right now. You can check out my series of videos over on YouTube I've been doing with them. A uh, couple of different... Uh, cooking videos. They're aimed at the beginner level at this stage. And over the next couple of months, we're going to build up into some, uh, into some higher level, more complicated cooks. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and stick around for that. But that is all the time we do have for today. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions. <laughs>